Okay, we've gone through the fundamental data type declarations and we've gone through references that hold pointers to objects. All that's left is something that's sort of half and half between the two, arrays. Java has a unique way for creating arrays. It isn't difficult once you see how it works, but it is different. Let me show you the simple steps required to create a simple array. The creation of an array is a two-step process. First, you create a reference to the array. This first line creates a reference named intArray1. This is a reference to an array of integers. This is not an array. Here, in the second line, the array is actually created by the new keyword and the address of the array is stored in the reference. Notice when the array itself is constructed, the size of the array is specified. Every array has a fixed size that cannot be altered. That size is set when the array is created. These two lines of code are the same as the first, but notice that the brackets are in a different place when the array reference is declared. It doesn't matter. When Java was being designed, an argument broke out about where the brackets should go, so they decided it didn't really matter to the compiler. They allowed you to put the brackets in whichever place you like. I've been writing Java code for years and I haven't decided yet. Sometimes I do it one way and sometimes I do it the other. You construct arrays of references to objects the same way you construct arrays to the fundamental data types. The first statement here creates a reference to an array of rectangle objects, and the second statement creates the actual array of references. The array doesn't contain any rectangle objects yet, it just contains references to rectangle objects. And again, you can put the parentheses in either place for these arrays. It's all the same to Java either way. Now here is exactly the same thing with the two lines being combined into one in each of the four cases. In this example, the reference to the array and the array itself is created in one statement. This is the way you'll see it written quite a bit, but you need to remember that this is two distinct operations. And remember, the result is just like that of an object. You have a reference that holds the address. Here is an array being created and values being stored in each of the members of the array. The array itself contains ints and they're all initialized to zero just like the declaration of any other int in Java. The other five lines of code store five different numbers into the array. Notice the subscripts on the arrays. The subscript values begin with zero and since there are five members of the array, the subscripts only go up to four. All array indexes in Java are zero-based. Now the garbage collection works for arrays the same as it does for other objects. If you set the value of int array to null in this example, then the array of integers itself is slated for garbage collection. That is, arrays will be recycled just like any other object that you create with the new keyword. When you create an array of references to objects, as in this example, it's still necessary to create the objects and put their addresses in the array. All the references are initialized to null when the array is created. And garbage collection applies here too. If the reference to the array of references is set to null, then the array of references is garbage collected, and then each of the individual rectangle objects is garbage collected.